So I tried to write a Blender add-on with AI and it failed. Mostly. I kind of got some working scripts, but let's talk about what that process looked like. Now, disclaimer up front, if you come to my channel, you're used to tutorials. This will be an educational video, but not a tutorial per se, but hopefully you learn some things from it. So I used chat GPT, which I had heard could write Blender add-ons, and I'd seen some videos and posts claiming that it could write these add-on scripts, and I thought... Can it really though, or is it only simple tasks? Now, personally, I have no intention of trying to sell a add-on written with ChatGPT or anything like that, but what I wanted to know is that sometimes when I'm doing tedious tasks, like duplicating certain sections of objects or offsetting keyframes, that there aren't scripts or add-ons already in existence for, if I could maybe use it to kind of write some stuff to help me automate things and maybe save me some time. We're gonna dive more into the process, but I wanna say that I ended up turning to my usual resources of Blender Stack Exchange and other places like that online where there are just incredible people that are so supportive in the Blender community and helping you on your learning journey. So. That's where I really ultimately ended up turning to to solve my task. So shout out just to the Blender community as a whole and how helpful they are and why they're so important um, and why artists are so important to this process. So I decided to open it up and dive in. And of course, I first asked it the important questions, which I totally did as a joke, but was actually kind of surprised at how good of a response it was. But anyways, now what I wanted to do is use a grease pencil as a insert into geometry nodes. So basically I wanted to animate in grease pencil and then have geometry nodes convert grease pencil into a curve and then to take that curve and convert it into an object like a chain or a rope. This way for working on my short film, rather than having to do a rope rig and manually animate everything, I thought it would be easier to go through with the grease pencil and draw. Now, of course, this works with just drawing a curve on a single frame, but I wanted to work with it as an animated frame. The problem being that right now you can convert grease pencil to a curve in the 3D viewport. However, you cannot convert it in geometry nodes and you also can't convert an animated grease pencil. Well, you can, but it'll only do it on the frame that you're set. So I thought maybe ChatGPT could help me doing this. Here is my idea. So it's a, a very long workaround. And I've heard that in the future, there's plans to make it so that you could potentially convert grease pencil to curve and geometry nodes, but I don't think that's a high priority or coming anytime soon. And I kind of wanted it now while working on my short film. So I came up with a long workaround. So my idea was to take the grease pencil object and then duplicate it for every frame in the timeline. And then after that, I would have a script run through and for every object on every frame, it would take that grease pencil object for that frame, convert it into a curve, and then add a keyframe to the visibility and the render toggles, move forward a frame and do that for an object. So since it would be running the operator on each frame, it would essentially be going through and converting each grease pencil object into a curve of that animated frame per frame. That way, as I move through the timeline, I would have a curve for every frame of animation that existed in the grease pencil object. And then what I would do is have that script keyframe that render visibility and toggle visibility on each object offsetting one frame as it moved forward each time. And what this would do is when you hit play in the timeline, it would essentially toggle the visibility every frame that had occurred across the frame range. And thus you would get the curve kind of like playing back as if it was the grease pencil by flicking the objects on and off in terms of their visibility. So it's kind of a, a long, complicated workaround, but the thing is that when I put all those in a collection, I can put that collection in geometry nodes, and then once that's in geometry nodes, it'll only look at the curves that are toggled for visibility within the viewport, and thus when I hit play, since it'll apply my chain or rope or whatever effect I'm using to each curve frame, it would play through the entire animation and kind of give the illusion that it was following the grease pencil. So of course, this is a very kind of cumbersome workaround, but with how much I'm planning on using this type of effects animation in my short film, I knew that it would save me a ton of time, even if it was a bit of kind of like a clunky solution. So I turned to ChatGPT uh, as somebody who cannot really code at all and looked 
towards it to help me solve this issue. So how did that go? Well, to be honest, not super great. So obviously when I tried to kind of enter in this like full add-on idea, it was too much for it. You know, it, I was asking for too many steps at once and I could try and refine the prompt and go back in there, but I don't think it was ever going to get all of those steps right, especially since I was kind of asking for something out of the ordinary. So I thought, okay, well maybe I can go in and I can ask it to do each element individually and then I can copy those elements and piece them together in a single script. So that's kind of what I tried to do as well. And this worked to an extent. So it was able to do basic things um, like toggle the render visibility on and off. But the problem was that I had to kind of keep retyping it in different ways to get it to understand what I wanted. So it would offset the animation data, but maybe not by one frame and only on selected objects and only here and there and just like all these different variations. So I ended up like, typing it in, I think like five to 10 different ways until I got something that kind of worked. And then I had to go in and just look at the code. And honestly, with the uh, the notes and stuff that added, I was able to kind of start understanding what some of the code was doing. And then I was able to kind of make modifications. So I got one that worked where it was inserting a keyframe and then I went in and kind of copied some things and changed where it was inserting the keyframes just by doing like negative one and plus one and that type of stuff. And I was actually able to kind of get that render visibility like working. So basically I was learning that I wasn't going to get the full script and that I was going to have to kind of pull things out. So then what I started doing is asking it how to do specific things. So I knew I wanted it to insert a keyframe at the start frame. So I asked it to write a script that would add a keyframe to the selected object on the start frame. And then I would look at the code there and would copy that code in. And then I'd be like, and the end frame and then copy that code in. So I wasn't getting full scripts out of it as much as I was like pulling lines of codes just because with my lack of knowledge of Python, I didn't even really know what to search on Google to find the answers. So I ended up getting some scripts that kind of worked. I had figured out how to toggle the render visibility, how to duplicate an object for the amount of frames within the frame range, and how to put them on a collection. So that went, that went pretty well. And then I wanted to make it so that I could convert the grease pencil to a curve. Well, I tried to do that and I ran that multiple ways through ChatGPT. And it just, it, it didn't get it right. <laughs> it kept getting it wrong. It tried to do this complex process of converting it to a curve and that just didn't work at all. And then I tried getting it just to run the curve operator and, and that didn't work at all. So uh, I ended up having to turn uh, to, you know, people the <laughs> on Blender Stack Exchange where I always go. Uh, I posted some questions there and did some research in the forums. And as always, people are incredibly helpful. I don't really want to, post their code and stuff on here that they kind of uh, helped with me. So I'll go ahead and link to that question below so you can go ahead and take a look at their responses and see for yourself. But yeah, I ended up reaching out to some friends and stuff and they were able to kind of help me fix some things. So apparently when you do the curve operator, it needs to be like activated in like a certain type of view space. So you have to override it in Python so that Blender thinks it's in that view space and then it'll run the curve operator from my limited understanding. But ChatGPT didn't know that and I had to turn to people to find that out. So uh, luckily, you know, Blender has an amazing community. So people hopped in and helped me and yeah, I was able to kind of get a semi working script going. So then I tried to use it to convert my script into a add-on. I wanted it to make an add-on with a button that would run the script so that I could just kind of run it. And I couldn't get that to work. Um, I, tried, I tried to get it to let me input some numerical values and those scripts actually just crashed Blender. Um, so yeah, uh, my experience with using AI to write add-ons. It was actually a pretty good learning experience because like I said, I didn't entirely know what terms to even search for in Google. So by working through chat GPT and it kind of commenting on the code, it actually was an incredible learning tool for me understanding a bit more how Python operates. Very limited. I still don't understand it at all, but I understood it a bit more, um, but it wasn't going to kind of write the end product for me. 
And uh, I still was not able to combine all of my scripts into one. So right now my process is uh, running four separate scripts that I was able to get to work. But when I tried to put them together, uh, it didn't work. And I didn't want to keep asking people on Stack Exchange to do it for me. Since this is for a personal project, uh, I don't really care if it's kind of a clunky process as long as it works. Uh, if I was ever to continue to start uh, doing this type of work, I would look into um, hiring people for either advice or writing the code out itself. But I just wanted to share my experience that ChatGPT can be a, a, a great learning experience for writing code, but I wouldn't recommend it to write all of your code for you. Um, I'm curious if anybody's tried it in the comments below. Um, yeah. Let me know what you think. If you like this format of video, I may do more just kind of talking about my learnings as I work on my short film. As usual, thank you for watching. Really appreciate you being here.